I interviewed Charleston White way before most of you knew who he even was. Early 2020, just before the pandemic, I do believe. Two and a half years ago, about. Way before the antics. I forgot how I came across him, but I ended up hitting him up. I think I saw him on someone else's platform or something. Black Trump supporter. So I was like, you know what? Let me hit this guy up and invite him on my show. So we exchanged numbers and I interviewed him shortly after. He had a message. I felt when I first came across him in 2019, 2020. One that I thought the world needed to hear. At least our country. But somewhere along the lines, his message got clouded by the online antics. And now that's what he's known for. I don't condone or agree with most of the online antics that Charleston White does. The disrespecting of dead rappers, etc. But I think we all understand why he does it, right? Because we give him the attention. You, me, us. Whenever we see Charleston White in the title, we're going to click on it. And just in fact, with having Charleston White in the title of this video, it'll probably do double the numbers. So I don't get a lot of numbers, but it's going to do double that just because his name's in it. And that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because of the Soldier Boy situation, the recent Soldier Boy situation. But let's keep it real. Charleston White does this for the attention. If you, me, us, if we stop clicking on his videos, you would go away. But we can't. Because let's keep it real. He's fucking entertaining. And even you listening right now who hates Charleston White's guts. You hate him with everything inside of you. You too. Still click. On videos. That have his name in the title. Light some with me. I just like to keep it real on my program. Play devil's advocate, whether it hurts your feelings or not. And we are all guilty for Charleston White's success. And it is success. He is always trending. He is one of the most searched YouTube names on YouTube. Over eight, everybody, over white people, age, like everything. He's, he's like always in the top 10. So I think in what his head he's doing is right. Does that make it right? I personally don't think so, but he's his own man. Now, Charleston White and I did do an interview, and we stayed in contact shortly after the interview we had in early 2020. You can look it up. Just type in Dusty Vision, Charleston White. It'll come up. Look at the date. I have my receipts. I, I interviewed him way before 99% of you even knew the name. Not saying that I put him on at all. His his put on was all him. That's that was all his hard work. I just saw something early on, and I said, you know what? Let me get this dude on my show. Got him on my show. We had a decent conversation, and next thing I know, he's the biggest thing on the internet. Him and I, we're going to do business together. He actually reached out to me and said, hey, let's do something. I had my podcast going on and 
He said, hey, let's do something. And this was right around the time where he started his character took a a different turn because he admits it's a character. So when his character took a different turn and he started saying things that would make it really hard for me to walk around Los Angeles comfortably. And I didn't get into this to look over my back. I haven't had to look over my back in 25 years and I'm not going to do it now as a 45 year old man. So I respectfully told him, I said, dude, your name is too hot right now. Keep doing what you're doing, but I can't, I can't do anything with you, my man. And keep in mind, this is before most people didn't even know who this guy was. I I, I said, nah, can't, can't do anything, man. Can't do anything, but you keep doing your thing. And shit, shortly thereafter, he became the number one target because of a lot lot of the things he was saying but it's all our fault it's all our fault that Charleston White is where he is today and good for him get your money Get your YouTube money, get your appearance money, get your podcast money. But dude. You're playing a very risky game. But it seems like you like risk. So do your thing. And see, I don't know if that's the character that likes the risks. Or if that's the real Charleston White. Because... Charleston White likes to compare the difference between Nipsey Hussle and Aramis. I mean, what is the difference between the Charleston White, the character, and Charleston White, the person that's at home when the cameras are off? Because see, what Charleston White is doing is no different than what Howard Stern was doing 25, 30 years ago. He's the new generation shock jock. That's what we used to call them. All those radio DJs out there used to do crazy things back in 1995. Hey, today on the show, we're going to have two lesbians, right? And they're going to shove watermelons where the sun don't shine. So make sure you tune in at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time because it's going down. Like, you know, he's doing what Howard was doing. Just in a different way. And Howard was very, he, he said things. I mean, you go back... And listen to some of the stuff Howard Stern was saying back in the 80s and 90s. It would never fly nowadays. I mean, it's borderline cringy. It's like, oh, shit, damn, I can't believe they used to say that on the radio. But they did because not everyone was little pussies back then. We're in a different time. The Charleston White's doing nothing different. Nothing different. But let's fast forward to this Soldier Boy situation, which I found extremely hilarious, especially after watching Soldier Boy's response video. Let's mark one for Charleston White and zero for Soldier Boy in this one. Um, first of all, Soldier Boy, why why are you approaching a forty something year old man, forty five whatever year old man, with one eye, small, with ten dudes? I mean, we know what you were trying to do, Soldier Boy. You did that. You did that. <clears throat> as an intimidation factor. See, what I would have done, and I'm just an older cat, a different type of player. 
I would have approached Charleston White by myself if I were Soldier Boy. Kept my dudes at bay, you know. He, I'm sure Charleston White could see the 10 dudes, you know, way over there. But to walk up on him like that, that's an intimidation factor. And in some states, definitely not California, definitely not New York. Like some states where the gun laws are a little bit laxed. Soldier Boy could have upped the blicky instead of some mace. And the local courts would probably be in favor of Charleston White for doing that. Oh, this little guy here with one eye gets approached by 11 people who look like thugs. May or may not. I'm going to assume that the people, people Soldier Boy walked up and they didn't walk in, up to him in tailored Armani suits. I'm just going to guess. I'm just going to guess. So a lot of courts would say, you know what? <clears throat> yeah, Charleston White was in the right. And once again, my, my show is all about devil's advocate, playing devil's advocate and being objective, not choosing a side. So if you don't like that and you get all butt hurt because I'm agreeing with Charleston White in this situation, then you're not the type of person I want listening or watching my show so you can just bounce i need people here who are okay listening to the other side without getting all angry without wanting to fight like that's the first thing we we do as as a people like even online i'm seeing everybody like we got 35 40 45 year old men online talking about fighting like do you see white people online talking about fighting at that age asian like do you see any of that or is it just us i'll answer that for you it's just us Like, it's really silly. Let's link up for that one-on-one. I need that fade. Let's link up. Yeah, you can link up for that fade. And then when you punch him, he falls, slips, falls, hits his head on the ground, bumps his head so hard that he ends up dying. Now you're in jail for a very long time because you needed to catch that fade over something some ding-dong said on the internet. Is that where we are nowadays? Because see, back in my day, and Charleston White knows this too, because he's my age. Back in my day, we would have ignored a Charleston White. We would literally have, he would have been the crazy guy in town. We'd be like, that, he's just, he's crazy, man. He's, he's You know, in, in town, everybody had one couple, like back in my day, like even kind of a city with, with 80,000, 100,000 people, there was like, one or two homeless. There was like not a lot of homeless people. There was a one or two, but there was the ones that you recognize. And they were always the crazy people. Charleston White would have been looked like this, the crazy person back in uh, 1989. Let's keep it real. And nobody would pay him any attention. Now we got these phones. And now we got the internet and YouTube. And Twitch. And everything. Every, we have a platform. Now he's the biggest thing ever. How long will it last? I, I just know I don't want to be in his position. No matter how good I'm doing money-wise... I can't let and and once again, is this Charleston White character that he's portraying online? Is he really this brave and just don't give a f? Or is he really scared at the end of the day? Because he's created a monster. And nobody wants to see Marshall no more. They want Charleston. He's chopped liver. So is this character that he's portraying, is it a facade? Is he really a scared person? There's nothing wrong with being scared. I've been scared. And if I was in his position, 
even with all the fame and all the money, I'd be a little scared. It's human nature. I'd be a little scared. I would definitely have my head more on a swivel now than I have it on now. See, on a, when you grew up in the city, you kind of, or when you grew up in certain areas, you keep your head on a swivel as it is. You know, if you're in a certain area, you kind of keep your head on a swivel, like, because shit could pop out at any time. So that part I get. But just imagine multiplying that times a thousand, because once again, Charleston White is one of the most Googled, one of the most YouTubed people right now so he can't go anywhere without someone saying hey that's charleston white and he knows this is he really that brave because he says this is a character or is he scared comment down below i'm going to leave you with a little clip from my interview with Charleston White back in early 2020. If you want to watch the full interview, I'll post the link in the description down below. You guys have a great day and don't get maced. Ladies and gentlemen on the line, Mr. Charleston White. What up, man? How y'all doing, man? We doing good, man. Doing good out here in California. And you're calling from Fort Worth, Texas, right? Yeah, yeah. Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth area metropolitan. Yes, yes, yes. Well, shit, I want to get, uh, I want to jump into it, man. I want to, uh, you know, maybe later on we'll talk a little bit of the current events and things like that. But I would love to, you know, get to know you first. I understand your uncle was a pimp. Yeah, man. Uh, my uncle Wayne, which was my mom's oldest brother, uh, when I was born, I think probably about 1976. Uh, early 1977, there was a movie uh, that came out that was called Come Back Charleston Blue. Uh, my dad's name is Charles. My uh, mom named me Charleston. So when I come home from the hospital, uh, you know, Unk's lifestyle, he's the only boy uh, amongst three girls, and he's the oldest. And so, uh, you know, that was his favorite movie. Uh, he gave me that name, Blue, Charleston Blue. And so it kind of it kind of stuck with me uh, throughout life. Uh I grew up under, uh, you know, my first five, six, seven years of life, man. Uh, you know, there's a lot of exposure to Uncle Wayne. Uh, my mother was a teenage mother. She had my brother at 15, had me at 17. Uh, my dad, my dad was a square guy, right? He was a square nigga. He went, he went to the Navy, uh, and then he got a job uh, working within government. Uh, my mother was a teenage mother with a lot of ambition. Uh, and so she landed a job at General Motors in the early 80s, uh, 81, 82. Oh, the good years. And so, yeah, yeah. And so and so our lives kind of went uh, from rags to riches, uh, seemingly like 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 overnight for me because I was so young. Uh, but Uncle Wayne was a very pivotal uh, a male figure growing up because he was mom's only brother. Uh, my granddad, my granddad owned a barber shop over on the south side of Fort Worth uh, in, a, in a very, uh, over off Allen and Hattie and Betsy. And, and if anybody from Fort Worth, they know what I'm talking about. And so the name of the barbershop was called Chopping Block. And everybody hustled outside and around that barbershop. And so I was always able to go and sit around other men and see the early hustlers from the, 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 the late 70s, the early 80s. Uh, I got to see uh, the guys who pushed the crack uh, out into the streets. I got to see my my, my granddad also. Uh, he he worked at the bus born, which the bus born, you know, that's the buses for the schools. So he had all the women at the bus born. Uh, you know, he had some selling pussy. He had some boosting clothes. Uh, so both my granddad and both my uncle man was real good with ladies. Uh, my mother, uh, my mother is a very uh, a strong black woman. Uh, uh, who's highly respected in the streets as well. My grandfather uh, is one of the founders and one of the originals of, of, of this big, back then it, it, it was like a social club. It's called the Dappers. And okay. it was a bunch of, you know, dapper gentlemen who dressed mm -hmm. real, real well. 
uh, and so my, my and so I come from dapper men. I come from men uh, uh, who pimped. The, the the significance about my uncle was uh, he was what they would call a gorilla pimp. He was very abusive. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he beat women, and so I grew up believing. Uh, that some of his prostitutes uh, were my aunts. You know how they, they say that's your auntie, that's your aunt Sharon. They didn't say that's his hoe, they say that's your auntie. Mm-hmm. So I grew up seeing them as aunts, right? So when I wake up uh, at night, uh, mom mom got a room for, you know, her big brother. He coming through with trash bags full of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I got to see uh, uh, things that, that most children, you know, shouldn't see early on. Uh, waking up in the middle of the night, man, hearing my uncle uh, jump on who I thought at the time was my Aunt Sharon mm. uh, and having to go to school two, three hours later, mm. uh, seeing her with the black eye. Uh, you, you learn to either become that kind of person or, or you learn to defy being that kind of person, man. And so growing up around women, uh, I never wanted to be the one to inflict the pain. Mm. Uh, so I never vowed to be the one to slap around and, and my uncle was vicious man uh, he'll beat her in a minute mm. uh, but it also uh, left a certain fact uh, a, a factor of intimidation that I had toward my uncle where uh, I couldn't you know that's a side that, that prevents you from bonding uh, man with your dad or with your uncle or, or whomever whomever you see uh, abusing people and so I saw that growing up man and I had an older brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, he nor I never been spanked by a man. Uh, we never been disciplined by a man. Uh, we always got to see the negative elements: uh, the drunk man, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the hustler man, uh, the wife beater, the woman beater, the cheat man. So we never saw the doctors. Mm-hmm. Uh, we never saw the lawyers. We never saw the faithful husbands. Uh, I never seen a man get up and go to work. Uh, all I ever seen was mom get up and go to work. So growing up. And in, in, in my young and in, in, in impressionable mind, I, I didn't know men work because I'd never seen a man get up and go to work. Wow. Damn. Oh, um, <clears throat> yeah. That's that's deep. Um, that's 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 deep. Uh, you know, I had my mother. She was she was very loving. Uh, very you know very nurturing. Uh, she 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 was a woman that had a moral compass, right? So she didn't lie. But mm-hmm. uh, she taught us to do right because right is the right thing to do. Uh, she never condoned. She never condoned our wrongdoings. Uh, so she tried to teach us right, but because you know, man, the the negative elements uh, that you see from your culture, uh, your your mom's brothers, your mom's cousins, uh, spending the night over your homeboys' houses. So all the the, the negative elements that you get exposed to, and, and and you don't have anything to correct it. You don't have anything to rebut it. Yeah. You don't have anything to compared to right so you embrace it 